Greetings, brothers. Brother Chris, Brother Cam, Brother Kent, Brother Jeff, Brother Ruben, and Brother Justin, and Brother Ralph. Hello, Ralphie. <coughs> um, I'm recording. Oh, I want to record a couple of videos which I got planned out, and I just thought I'd do a, a quick intro to them, um, which may take a wee while. I don't know. Hopefully, I'll better get it under 10 minutes. I just want to try to introduce you guys to symbolism because it's really, I feel like it's really changed my life in the last couple of years. It's changed how I engage with scripture and it's changed how I engage with the world. I think understanding scripture and understanding reality are basically the same thing. And yeah, I'd, I'd really like to try and introduce you guys to it. Symbolism takes a while to understand and get into. Most of the uh, engaging I've done with it has been through Matthew Pejo and Jonathan Pejo, two brothers. It also, for me, has involved a fair bit of John Viveki, a little bit of Jordan Peterson to some extent. It also turns out Brother Kent has been going on a similar journey now for a couple of years, and recently we both discovered that uh, we've been doing this journey in parallel, and we've been talking a bit about it over the last couple of months, and after spending quite some time talking to Kent about trying to plan out a couple of studies for the small group, I uh, thought that I would do a couple of short videos instead. So uh, this isn't those videos, this is an introduction to those videos, hopefully it doesn't get too long. The first video will be titled, Meaning Does Exist in the Material World, perhaps, um, as opposed to just in our heads. It could also be called transpersonal meaning, although that might be a bit a bit hard to engage with, so I'll figure out which one I'm going to call it. Episode two is going to be called What is Heaven? Um, so yeah, I'll get to those later. So by way of trying to paint a picture of how much this symbolic view has really changed how I look at scripture and the real world, I thought that I would use an analogy which I stole, have stolen um, from somebody else, but the analogy is about uh, how facts develop over time, and we 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 come across facts um, and we develop more powerful facts that help us understand the world better. And for me, learning about what the Bible and learning about the the interface between faith and and reality when I was younger, um, learning about it. It was like I was using a, a dull bronze axe to cut trees down. Or if you're playing Ark, the computer game, um, I was using my fists to punch trees and cut them down. And then as I got older, I'd, I'd maybe upgraded to like a steel axe at some point. And then, I don't know if I ever got to the chainsaw. Maybe I skipped the chainsaw. At the moment, after having covered some of the, some of the symbolism and started to understand how different and how much more light it sheds on scriptures and the world, I've started to feel like I'm driving a tree harvester. Which is an amazing machine. <laughs> and so the, the facts I'm using, or the, or the ideas, or the lenses I'm using now to, to understand scripture and engage with scripture, and to understand reality, it does feel like they're, they're a tree harvester, not an axe. I don't know what happened to the chainsaw. I think I skipped the chainsaw. Anyway, so I've, that's an analogy, but I'd, I feel it's a fair one. So hopefully that'll communicate um, something of my excitement at, at discovering um, some of these some of these ideas and this way of looking at things. I think <laughs> just to uh, explain a little bit more about these these videos I'm going to make for you. One of the things that's really hit me um, thinking about my childhood experiences in church um, has been how much the scientific worldview has impacted the way that ch churches perhaps teach and, and look at the Bible. I think that it, there's other things that have caused this to happen as well, such as World War I and World War II and the Industrial Revolution and, and, and a bunch of other stuff. But I certainly think scientific materialism has made a real impact on the way we think about the world. And, and it is easy to think that the world is just a mindlessly causal bunch of atoms all working and you know science is really powerful and has done some amazing things for our quality of life but it does strip the subject of meaning out of the world 
I mean, it literally does take people out of the equation because in the scientific method, you don't want subjective interpretations messing up your results. But one of the downsides of that has been a real loss of meaning for people in their lives, uh, which I'd really recommend having a look at John Levake's videos on that. But also, it has also meant that we have this strange view of the world as perhaps meaning only exists in our heads or primarily exists in our heads. And if you add postmodernism to all that, it also says that that meaning is also meaningless. And the, the ancient worldview was quite different from that. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the later videos. But, you know, for me as a kid, often my experience of Bible teaching in church and thinking about the Bible was that those stories were, were just stories or, or they were just factual accounts of some stuff that happened to some people, which they probably were, but... But that meant that the the big way that those stories were looked at was they were they were interpreted as what did this mean for these people in their lives and therefore what could it mean in our lives for us in the modern world which is a good question to ask because there's nothing wrong with it uh, but in and of itself it's it's it, it leads to a quite a small I would say number of meanings um, that you could derive from the story and and um, I think there's a lot more to it than that so I'll look at that a little bit. And, and couple of these videos and certainly if you decide you want to look more at Jonathan Pajot's material you'll you'll discover that it can go a lot a lot wider than that and there's good reasons why why you want to go a bit wider than that too so more recently for me I've come to think about the stories in the Bible as mythological meanings of those stories and that doesn't mean that they're uh, wide widely believed falsehoods because that's not really what a myth is uh, John Vivaki has some really good stuff on this one of the things he says about myths is that they're at least in the ancient world, myths were perennial patterns in the world, perennial as in patterns that are always there, that affect everybody. And the ancients were trying to communicate about what those were. And that's I think, a much more profound way of looking at, at, at ancient stories or myths or, or things from the Bible that can help us understand what they can mean at a whole lot of different levels. I think when I used to teach symbolism at school, because symbolism crops up in literary um, texts as well, crops up in films, you know, it's, it's considered a, a literary device. I used to teach teach kids that the, the Star Trek logo on on the on the jackets of, of all the uniform of Star Trek people was a good example of symbolism, you know, because that it just looks like the what would it be a jet trail of a spaceship in space, but it didn't just mean that; like it meant a whole lot of stuff. It meant about um, how how you know mankind was advancing through exploring the universe. It meant a little bit about like. Uh, scientific improvement and how that was advancing the, the human race and it, had, it was quite an optimistic vision of civilization perhaps in science but that one doodle on the on the, on the uniform was not it's not just a doodle you know it, it stood in for all of these other meanings as well and that was quite a simple way to think about symbolism um, the Pajorian view of symbolism is a bit more complex than that the ancient Greek word sort of two versions of the ancient Greek word and one fed into the, another one and then that one fed into the modern word symbolism but it used to just mean two rivers coming together or two things coming together. Now it also meant two things coming apart which can be a bit confusing but one of the ways of looking at it was that it was things that were thrown together that were somehow connected and the uh, Pajoian view of I would say symbolism is that there's patterns out there which is a whole lot of things which are connected in the real world and trying to understand those patterns is is probably when we start to call it symbolism and we talk about one thing being a standard for something else or one thing connecting with something else. Oh, and finally, to make some of this more concrete or manifest example, I thought, <laughs> I tried getting different backgrounds for this video. I tried a, a background of a ruined church and it didn't work out very well because the contrast was all whack. And, and then I thought, why don't I just stick with the background that I had, this background I had for my uh, sci-fi course I'm teaching this year in English. And it occurred to me some of the reasons that I might like cyberpunk, which is a genre I'm very fond of might be that I did identify with anti-heroes and and I think anti-heroes are a part of a really important pattern in the world at the moment and I wonder if anti-heroes are particularly relevant now partially because of a loss of meaning in people's lives um, but also uh, anti-heroes have sometimes been called heroes that do the right things for the wrong reasons which makes them non-heroic I'd kind of disagree with that I think anti-heroes are deeply flawed but I think they end up Solving problems for personal reasons, because perhaps some of those highfalutin grand reasons aren't, aren't, aren't cutting it anymore, possibly because the, the authority figures and the authority structures have come, become corrupted. So it's occurred to me, well, it hasn't been lost on me, the fact that I really like science fiction and I really like cyberpunk, so there might be a, a pattern out there in the world that I engage with um, somehow.
So anyway, hopefully um, these these next couple of videos will help explain some of that stuff better than I than I'm able to, and it'll give you at least some idea of what it's like. Oh yeah, so because that ancient worldview is so different, the the vocabulary that's used isn't what we're used to, or well, the, the words he's using to describe things are not, not familiar to us. So it is quite difficult to start with, but hopefully I can bridge some of that gap in these first couple of videos. And, and really, they're more designed to give you an idea of why it's worth your while to look into this stuff more. Hopefully with some examples that I've found really exciting, and, and hopefully you'll find them exciting too. Um, some of them you may not agree with, which is fine. It's more about, it's more about whether just the the, the claims that this this view makes, or, or the claims that perhaps meaning could exist in the world everywhere, um, I think are, are worth giving some time to, to see if that really could be true. So yeah, um, I look forward to talking to all you guys. I pray for all of you as well, and, and I really hope that um, this can be something that you will get a lot out of, the biblical symbolism.